All right, we're good. That's it. Yep. We're on. Yep. Sweet. Wild times. What's up, guys? Hey. Yo. How is everybody doing? Peter, what's up? Not much, man. Doing good. How are you? Why do you seem so frustrated early? What is going on in your I'm life? I'm always frustrated because I have to set up the tech and I look at this camera. I look, it's all overexposed. I look like fucking powder. Anyways. You look, you look beautiful Thank to me. You. So for those just joining us, if uh, this is your first time, this is the 26th episode of the Wild Times podcast, a terrific podcast where myself, the broologist, is joined by the broducer and the professor. We bro out, we talk animals, we talk science, we tell a lot of nonsense and stories. We typically get pretty trash, to be quite honest. And uh, yeah. I'm not going to be doing that today because I'm going from here to uh, rugby training, which I'm looking forward to because it just started back up Ooh. today. Um, nice. But yeah, guys, what's up? Hey, so I think, you know, we should address the elephant in the room, which is... Uh, what the fuck? Where were you? Where were you on Monday when we were supposed I to? I know record? I missed. I missed a pod. I was at sea. Ooh. I was 190 miles offshore, adrift. A little maelstrom come through and wipe you out. <laughs> what happened? Um, good question. Uh, no. So I, w- I went out there with some buddies. We were uh, looking at the bluefin tuna that were are occurring off the coast of Southern California right now. Huge fish, up to 200 pounds, uh, up to 300 pounds. Um, and we were diving out there and uh, got kind of late. And so we said, you know, we could either drive all night, it's 190 miles offshore, or we could just power down and uh, sleep out here adrift and drive back tomorrow. And that's what we did. We just turned the motors off and uh, slept just drifting out at sea, kind of no idea where we were going or where we were ending. Woke up in the morning, motored back to the tuna grounds, dove a little bit more, and then uh, motored back home. So did you get a little seasick? I heard you might oh, get yeah. a little seasick. Yeah, I did. I, did, I mentioned that, did I? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, um, we were we were out there and uh, it got dark, and so we turned the motors off, and we didn't have a sea anchor, which is something that keeps the bow of the boat into the directly into the wind, which helps with uh, the rocking. And the boat turned sideways. And it was rough as shit out there. So all of a sudden, we were just kind of bumping around and crashing around. And I don't typically get seasick, but for whatever reason. Um, being on the boat sideways to the beam, sideways to the waves. Um, I just all of a sudden turned a little green and spent most of my night puking. So that was fun. Nice. Sounds. Have you ever been seasick or tip? No, I've got, uh, the stomach of a, of an ox dude. I I don't get sick, uh, like that very often. Maybe only like when I've had the flu. What about you? You seem very, uh, just weak stomach person. (laughs) Well, I've been, I've been seasick twice ever. Once was, um, just on a boat in Australia on a fishing trip. And it was, uh, I, I just can't imagine a worse feeling. Ugh, like, it's yeah. awful. It, it you feel like you want to like die. Your body, mm-hmm, seriously. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. if someone was like, dude, do you want me to just tell you? Like it, you'd consider <laughs> it. You would. Absolutely. Have you guys, Peter, yeah. I, uh, sorry. No, I was ahead. just going to say no, like my nightmare, it used to be tinnitus, but now I have that and I'm used to it. But just be, <laughs> but it's like this idea of illnesses that are inside of your head that you can't get away. So equivalent to tinnitus on the visual side would be like having vertigo. Like imagine having vertigo for a week and you're just trapped in your head. If you open your eyes, you're flipping upside down. It just sounds like a nightmare. I, don't, yeah, I think there's, I think there's like, my mom has vertigo. I don't think Same it's here. that she sees upside down all the time. I think she just falls once a month. No, no. And gets dizzy yeah, it gets and dizzy. the world yeah. kind of tilts. It's, it's like yeah. having seasickness for no reason, just because because of a mental deficiency. So Forrest, there were two things you missed on Monday uh, in our bonus podcast that I just want to do quick rapid fire that I think some of the listeners will want to hear your quick opinion on. Let's so play. one was we, we talked about the story about uh, that scientists at John Hopkins submerged five octopus, octopi mm. in in water that was laced with the drug MDMA. Oh, and, wow. uh, little, little Molly Puzz? Yeah. And yeah. they uh, <laughs> they stopped playing with their toys and they started cuddling and rubbing each other. So two questions. First, initial thoughts. Um, I'd like to say that that seems like animal cruelty, but maybe that just seems like animal Amor- fun, like, like they're raging. Animal cruelty. Um, initial thoughts. Yeah. I don't think that's animal cruelty. Um, it's, it, initial thoughts are wow, uh, followed by why. Like, you know, that's, that's my qu- yeah. That's question yeah. two: is why? How they get the funding for this study? <laughs> it's bizarre. As a scientist, it's like you want to understand the world, and and you know, 
especially as a biologist working with wildlife, you want to understand how animals interact, how they interact with each other, what they're thinking, what they're doing. I don't know how giving them ecstasy really plays into that, to be quite honest. (laughs) Uh, Well, because you would think, like, at first I was thinking maybe this was to study, like, serotonin pathways, something Mm -hmm. related to humans, but you wouldn't choose an octopus as your test subject if you were, if it was about humans. Uh, My guess would be that this is, like, some grad student who goes to Ibiza every (laughs) summer, and he's probably, have you ever seen the guy on Instagram who's just, like, mollied out of his mind? He's just, like, humping the air. He's super sweaty European guy. It's probably that guy. Yeah. It's probably that guy who's like, hey, you know what's you sweet is MDMA. Let's let's and I'm also a marine biologist. So let's get let's give some octopus some MDMA. Let's get some funding. Let's let's call it science and see what happens. <laughs> the other the other story was that the we had talked about you got a phone call from a uh, county police or county sheriff in Tennessee because they mm-hmm. had a tiger on the loose. We talked That's about right. this. We we filled in the listeners on uh, Monday that it was a case of mistaken identity. It was actually just a uh, a little old bobcat. Well, was it though? Because that's a real convenient excuse. Oh, um, interesting. So, you yeah. know, no, look, I'm not. You know, I'm not the world's biggest conspiracy theorist. But if you're, if you have the spotlight on you to go and find a tiger in Nashville, Tennessee, or whatever part of Tennessee this is, um, and you don't find it after three weeks. Are you going to go out and be like, sorry, guys, couldn't get the job done? Or are you going to be like, nah, there's just no tiger. I'm fine. (laughs) It was clearly a bobcat. Like, it was just tiger. It's ridiculous. Well, you've Um, you've seen both animals. Is is it possible? Could any reasonable person mistake a bobcat for a full-grown tiger? First of all, no, (laughs) absolutely not. Those two animals don't look anything alike. I mean, people see what they want to see. There's no doubt about that. That's like the whole Black Panther dilemma. But I think that, you know... The thing that you're missing out on or the thing that we haven't touched on is not just that they would, you know, make up that they it was a bobcat or they couldn't solve it. So they're trying to cover their tracks. But rather, you're talking about one of the most cryptic animals on Earth. Like tigers are incredible at camouflage and hiding. They're absolutely, you know, bar none, some of the best hiders on the planet. That thing doesn't want to be found. It's not going to be found, you know, and and it's a big place. Like, to be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time in Tennessee, but I'm very certain there are large tracts of wilderness, and that animal's hightailing out of there. It doesn't want to hang out in a city neighborhood. It doesn't want to hang out in Nashville and listen to the music scene. It's getting out of there, you know? So a couple people spot it, report it. That thing goes way into the woods. Maybe it lives, maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Maybe there's enough prey to support it. Maybe the climate doesn't isn't appropriate. That I don't know. But it's very easy for a couple guys who, you know, work at wildlife control to be like, hey, you know, we couldn't find it. Turns out it was a bobcat. Odds are nobody's ever going to see it again because it's now out in the Chattahoochee wilderness or whatever it's called. Mm. Sure. Don't the Appalachian Mountains run through most of Tennessee, too? So it just could have gone up into the mountains. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it, there's, you know, there's a lot of undeveloped, uninhabited space in the United States. And it's, there's I promise you there's more than one tiger running around. Like, take, for instance, the, the damn water buffalo, Patrick, from uh, New yeah. Orleans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, Peter, Patrick and I are... Uh, we're filming this uh, Extinct or Alive episode in Louisiana, mm-hmm. um, cruising through the sawgrass, you know, on an airboat. And you, I don't know if this means anything to you, but wouldn't you know it, there stands like a one-ton Asiatic water buffalo out in the middle of the swamp of Louisiana. It means everything to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it could have been there a year, it could have been there 10 years, could have been there a week, like maybe nobody else has ever seen it. How did that water buffalo right, get right. to get it escape during a hurricane? Did it escape from a zoo? Yeah. Some crazy rancher in Texas let it go and it made its way to Louisiana. You know, who knows? And has it ever been seen since? Probably nope. not. You know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe some redneck shot it and made jerky. I don't, you know, who the hell knows? You'll never know. And that's the same thing with this tiger, mm-hmm. right? We don't know where it came from. We don't, we'll probably never know where it ended but up. You, but you, yeah, right. it is a but tiger. you, but it certainly wasn't a But your yet. statement is, yeah, I don't right, so that. you do think it was an actual tiger because, Pat, you said that a tiger is 350 to 400 pounds, a bobcat is 12 to 14 pounds. Correct. Like, like yeah, like up to like up 20 to like pounds. 30, it's bananas. Yeah, 20, you can yeah. never mistake that. So that's the basis for you thinking it's just a load of shit? Well, not just that, but, um, you know, it's one thing to see a bobcat and go, oh my God, there's a mountain lion, right? Because you're expecting a mountain lion sure, or, sure. you know, mistake a raccoon for an opossum or something like that. The right, people that are right. reporting seeing a tiger, they weren't out there being like, 
oh, there could be a tiger around the corner, right? They're not tricking themselves mentally into thinking that they're going to see a yeah. tiger. So they had nothing to gain by going in and being like, there's a tiger out mm-hmm. there. You know what I mean? That's not a, that's not a mistake of like, I saw something and identified it yeah. wrong because that happens when your brain plays a trick on you because you really have been thinking you're about, sure. to see it. Yeah. yeah, you're expecting to see something. You've been thinking about mountain lions. You've been thinking about cougars. Then you see a bobcat and you're like, oh my God, I saw a cougar. Right, right. Right. Cause you saw a yeah, flat. Yeah. That makes mm-hmm. sense. It's another thing to be like, no, listen, I'm telling you, I saw a fucking tiger in Tennessee. <laughs> like this doesn't belong. Yep. Right. And so, although, although I totally think things are reported that are wrong all the time, this one to me is just too suspicious that coupled with the fact that I got that phone call from, uh, from wildlife control or whoever it was, or not phone call, but email, mm-hmm. um, that was like, Hey, do you have any tips? Nah. <laughs> it was like, you know, it's too suspicious, man. I don't believe it. I don't believe, I think there's a tiger running around out there. Yeah. And if you're like the animal control person, you could, ju- the upside of just lying and saying it was a bobcat is everyone calms down and no one's scared. Sure. Correct. The downside is like, if the tiger comes back, then you can just go like, Oh, I, sorry, I was wrong. Exactly. You know, exactly like it's not right. that big of a risk to just lying. Yep. Like the government does all the time. <laughs> also, and I'm not knocking anybody that works in animal control because I've, I've, you know, helped out with that. I've worked with people like that. These are people who like 90% of the time they're pulling a cat out of a tree or, or getting a, a raccoon out of your dumpster, <laughs> right? They're not equipped right. to handle with a tiger on the loose in Tennessee. Like these are not people who are like, yeah, oh no, I got it. I'll track down that tiger, dart it, you know, uh, cage it up and, and move it. Like they don't know how to do that. These are... These are people whose average day job is telling you that that opossum in your tree is not going to kill you. You know, it's like, yeah. like, like they are not equipped for this. So for them to be like, no, definitively, there's no tiger is kind of like, uh, do you really have the right to say that? <laughs> so about four or five years ago, I was uh, walking to the Grove uh, in L.A. I was just walking down Fairfax and I saw a squirrel that had been hit by a car, but it like mm-hmm. had its back half run over. Oof. And it like needed, needed to be euthanized. It was like struggling. I was like, fuck. Mm-hmm. And I like wasn't about to like stomp on its head at, in that moment, uh, which in retrospect, I should have. But um, so I looked up L.A. animal control and I started calling. And literally when you call L.A. animal control, it just rings <laughs> and no one ever sure. answers. So <laughs> I tried for like an hour to get a hold of them. Just there's nobody there. There's just no one yeah. fucking home. So then it sort of like started to become obsessed with it. So for like a week, I just kept calling LA animal control control to see if I could get someone (laughs) on the line. Just at no point did anyone ever answer the phone. I I think, I mean, that's just, I I don't know if that, that's just an LA thing because I've called the police at least three times that I can remember one for an accident where somebody rear ended me on my, when I was on my motorcycle and then just laughed in my face and walked into their house and then one where a guy was uh, stealing shit out of the parking garage with a giant backpack on at three in the morning. The cops never answered the one time. The second time they came six hours later at 930 in the morning and she was stepped out of the car and said, don't lose faith in the LAPD. We were very busy last night. And I was just like, this is absurd. So I think like, dude, it just the, any service in LA, probably other big cities too, but I think LA is the worst offender. You're not getting a hold of anybody at, in the government to do anything. <laughs> That's bonkers. Yeah. That's bonkers. So Forrest, what do you think of this? I, I'm curious to see what, what, what your thought is. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a conservation park in South Africa called okay. Rockwood Conservation Park. Okay. Um, they found two dead giraffes or, or what you would call giraffes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the so they're dead. They're just, yeah. So the, the two dead giraffes are just lying there. They're just, <laughs> just laying there. Like what happened? They were hit by lightning. Oh, wow. They died due to a lightning strike. Yeah. They're very tall. So apparently, apparently they're now studying this to see if exactly what Peter said, if their height could make them more susceptible to getting struck by lightning. I don't even think that is worthy of a study. It's got like, to be a fact, you know, right? I mean, we learn the, like, like just, uh, you're yeah. talking about, you're talking about a huge animal. It's full of water, which is a magnet for lightning, mm. right? It's, sure. uh, you know, it, it stands above the acacias, not in every sense of the word, but you know, it, it, they're very tall, their heads stick up. I don't believe for one instant that there is another animal in the African savanna more likely to get struck during a lightning storm than a giraffe. How many, here, quick, quick guessing game. How many humans in the U.S. die each year, die due to lightning strike? What would you guess? So fatality. Two. 
50. I'm going to go two. 50. You know that's a huge spread. It's 51. Oh, bam. 51. Holy shit. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah Recep comes yeah. through oh, again. Oh. Only nine <laughs> to 10, between nine and 10% of those struck by lightning die from it. So you could extrapolate that out to say there's about 500 people that are struck by lightning. Mm hmm. Each year that's in the a US lot and 50. That's dead. a lot of people getting struck by lightning. what happens to the other uh, 450. They get special powers, they just have an amazing story. <laughs> no, shit. If you, get, if you get struck by lightning, do you tell people? Oh, yeah, dude. Would you tell? I'd people? tell everybody. I don't know because you would because Ooh, you're already awesome. a little, <laughs> but oh, yeah, you're um, not a you know, storyteller. Like, <laughs> you don't have any stories. I've never heard you tell a story. <laughs> no, that's that's not what I'm talking about. If the 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 the, the, mis the the preconceived notion is if you've been struck by lightning, you're fucked up, right? So sure. you're going around telling people you're struck by lightning. Or are they like, oh, you're special now? No, but I mean, I think people make yeah. that judgment <laughs> call in having a conversation with you. It's like, <laughs> it's not just you got struck so, by lightning. You have a mental deficiency now. No, I do think it would be like a little bit like you were the guy who got out of prison for like, <laughs> people would be like, it's kind of cool, but like, it's also like he makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> um, quick uh, funny. last piece of trivia. Yeah. Of course. I th I, so I Googled it. I wanted to see what was the most amount of people that it, were ever killed by a single lightning mm. strike. Okay. Cause you know, if it hits the ground, it can spread out and come up through your feet and kill you. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was in Zimbabwe. Oh, wow. Oh, nation. interesting. Two days before Christmas, 1975, 21 people killed by one lightning strike. Damn. They were, they were hiding inside a, a mud brick hut uh, because there was a horrible rainstorm, and the lightning hit the hut and killed 21. Damn, that's, that's a lot. nuts. That's I think a I lot of electricity. Yeah. That's a lot of like I might have told this story before on the pod. I can't remember. but So we used to, as um, backed up by that story that you just told or that statistic, we used to get crazy lightning storms in Zimbabwe. I mean, like crazy gnarly, huge downpours, thunder and lightning, like to the point that the whole house would rattle, et cetera. And one time when I was a kid, uh, I was sitting in the bath, like splashing around. I remember I, I must have been six, seven years old, something like that. Nude. And uh, I, I was, I was <laughs> playing with my little schmeckle. And, uh, and my yeah. mom comes running in and she goes, get out of the tub, get out of the tub, because, you know, this lightning storm was coming and the thunder and you could hear it and everything else. And a guy, I was kind of like, you know, whatever, it kept splashing. My mom was like, get out. And I like got out of the tub, put the towel on, walked like six feet. And all of a sudden, the loudest sound I've ever heard. It was like when you see in a movie where everything goes like quiet with that ringing. It's like Peter's tinnitus all yeah. the time. Um, it's, it's just that like bing yeah. sound followed after an explosion. Um, and I turned back around. My mom was like holding my hand or standing right next to me. I can't really remember. But we turned back around. And the lightning had come in through the window and hit the bathtub and cracked it in like six places and charred everything uh, on one side of the tub black. And it was within 15 seconds of me getting out of the tub that it had exploded wow. our bathtub. And our Another. Bathtub. Yeah. Maybe you should be nicer to your mom. <laughs> I, I've heard that before and I should. Be. Another near death <laughs> experience from Forrest. But that wasn't that, like a good one. Like I didn't no, do anything. I was sitting in a bathtub, you know. Yeah, you're just, just wanking in a bubble forest, bath. Uh, <laughs> right. Speaking of speaking of death, there's an update on an animal mystery that we had in a previous episode. I, I definitely thought you were going to say speaking of wanking in a bubble <laughs> bath and then give us a story. Well, I, mean, but, um, I guess continue. this could be considered that too. So you remember all those elephants <laughs> that mysteriously died in uh, Botswana? In Botswana. Yeah. Of course. It yeah. has been mm -hmm. solved. I forget. Do you remember what the uh, what we came up with was the cause of this at the end of the day on the last podcast? Well, I was I was, you know, hypothesizing that it had things to do with drought and ah, that's right. uh, the fact that there could be overpopulation. Um, but I, I haven't seen the news that they have solved this because it was a big mystery. So it has been solved and it is a bacterial poisoning. That has that ended up being the thing that killed these hundreds of elephants in Botswana, and it's from toxins that were produced by a cyanobacteria in the water. Ah, well, you know, I wasn't wrong. Cyanobacteria is a blue-green algae that comes about from stagnant water sitting for too long and and basically radiating in the sun. Mm. So during times of drought, when you have the stagnant water and things aren't moving enough. You can get these blooms, this blue-green algae bloom, which is which 
the blue green algae creates the cyanobacteria. So that wasn't right, but I also wasn't no. wrong. <laughs> Have you ever heard of anything like this happening in the past or, you know, is this like a common th- Not, um, it's common that things can die from cyanobacteria. Okay. That's for sure. Um, it's, you know, you get a stomach infection. It's, 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 a, it's a poison. Okay. It's a bacterial poisoning. Mm-hmm. Um, and it poisons the blood and it, you know, it can be really bad. I've never heard of three, I think it was over 300 in the end, 340 something Mm -hmm. animals that went down. Um, I've never heard of that many. And the other thing that's interesting is that it's elephants. Now elephants, you know, they're, they're conditioned for drought living in sub-Saharan Africa. So they drink a lot of stagnant water. They, they wallow in the mud, they get water out of anything they can basically. So it's interesting. This must've been a very, very highly toxic or high concentration of cyanobacteria in order for it to kill this many animals. And you, you have to wonder, you know, not to be the evergreen eco warrior, but why, mm-hmm. you know, is there something that humans have done? Is it, is it like, you know, when we mix uh, agricultural chemicals with water and you get these big algae blooms that can kill people, is there something that's happened uh, that humans have influenced the environment to create the sand bacteria, or maybe not. You know, maybe it's just a natural die-off, which is pretty. Well, isn't the uh, blue-green algae? Doesn't that come about when the water like gets warmer? I mean, they've said that we've had all these blooms that are mm-hmm. killing off stuff. I've heard about in the regular oceans, there'll be these huge die-offs of fish. There'll just be a bunch of dead fish, and it's it's from that yep. because uh, I guess you know they always attribute it to global warming because the uh, blue-green algae, which you just mentioned is is the quantity of its rising in the water so is it possible that Correct. this is what it happened here I, I think so i mean i don't really know i'm not super uh detailed on that but i do know that blue green algae comes about through sunlight right they they photosynthesize they use sunlight to make their own food um the more radiation the more solar radiation that occurs the more blue green algae you're going to get that leads to die-offs when it gets to a point of concentration that things can't process it any longer so is there an indirect case to be made for global warming and us being the devil and <laughs> we're the creatures that killed those elephants, even though nobody ever did it. Yeah. Always. There's always for that sure. case. Is that a terrible shitty case that nobody should preach? Yes. Because all that does is perpetuate ecophobia that nobody likes and it's stupid. And I, although, uh, you know, I very much so believe global warming is a thing. I hate the whole, like we're, we're fucking up the whole world. Sure. I mean, we are, but how about how we're fixing it? That's interesting. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I'm glad they solved it though. I remember, uh, very proudly, speaking of Zimbabwe a lot here, my home country was the first one. They, they were the first guys to want to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, um, I remember that. Saying that they had it they had it uh, kind of figured out, but they were waiting for a couple other people to give their their results. So that's yeah. cool. And at the end of the day, it wasn't that controversial. So, you know, it's... Right, you know. right. When, Forrest, when you've, when you've been to Australia, have you ever been to Kakadu National Park? It's up in the northern part. I feel like that's... In the Northern Territory? Yeah, I feel like that's up kind of where we were looking, uh, looking for the Tasmanian tiger. Um, Sounds familiar. I have to I have to look and see if I've been up there. Yes. Uh, oh no, Kakadu is very famous. It's got the big rock spires, and I've always uh, wanted yeah. to go there. I think you have to access that from Darwin, which is a part of Australia. I've never been to that that northwestern side. Um, so no, never been. Really always cool. wanted to go. Yeah. So, Cool place. Yeah. Very beautiful. Obviously, if you, if you check out like Google images, looks, looks mm-hmm. amazing, but, uh, they've got croc infested rivers there. I mean, it's a great mm-hmm. place to go look for crocodiles, right? Oh yeah. There's sure. rivers running through huge the park, crocs. huge crocs. They, they, in 2018, they found three new species of, or maybe it was two. Uh, I'm just, I'm just remembering this off the top of my head. Cause I was so fascinated. They found two or three new species of sea snake right offshore from Kakadu. Cause they were just like, Oh, there's only 14 species of sea snake. Turns out there's 17. Wow. We just found three more, which is like incredible to just find three types of sea snake. How but do anyways. you find three? Were they at like a part, <laughs> like were, were they at a gathering? I, I couldn't tell you. I, I actually, I need to read it again. It's been a minute, but I was just like flabbergasted. Sea snakes to me are, you know, combines two of my favorite things, the ocean and snakes. Sure. And, uh, I was like, I, I was blown away by that. But anyway, I, I, so, yeah, so you've got this, this, this park that's got these rivers. It's known for having massive, you know, 15 to 18 foot crocodiles. Mm-hmm. And right now there's three humpback whales just hanging out in one of the rivers, 12 miles upstream from the wow. ocean. No way. Three humpback whales are 12. They're just in a river. Um, wow. Actually, sorry, there's an update. So two have recently just returned to the ocean, but the third one is still hanging out in a crocodile-infested river. 
That's bizarre. I mean, it's not the I'm first time. I'm those crocodiles, yeah. by the way. <laughs> well, I'm curious. To, I know. Talk about a delicious swimming right? meal. It would literally be like if you just were like voracious, a vora- someone who was always starving, and then you just like woke up and there was just a pizza the size of a house <laughs> right. just sitting there. Oh, and shit. nothing yeah. to keep you from just taking a nibble. <laughs> right. I'll, totally. I got to ask you, though. So, you know, why... Two of them safely returned. The third one's still there. It doesn't appear that they've been attacked or killed by crocodiles. Uh, I'm surprised they weren't just immediately attacked. I mean, what do you think's going on there? Well, first of all, humpback whales do get lost. We've seen that before with strandings and them getting stuck in bays and things like that. I definitely think that's what's going on here because I don't think humpback whales want to be up rivers. Um, right. Why they haven't been attacked? My best guess would be it's so large that it's just way too overwhelming for the crocodile. Right. So it's like, as opposed to it being, you know, as opposed, exactly to use your analogy, Patrick, it's like if you were starving and you woke up and there was a pizza the size of the house, you'd be like, who, am I, uh, who put this am I gonna pizza here? put this in this my is, mouth? <laughs> yeah, this is right. mighty suspicious. Um, and I think, <laughs> you know, I, I think I think there's, a, there's an essence of truth to it. It's like the same reason you can, you know, you can't swim in a river filled with crocodiles, but you can take a big boat you know, over one and nothing happens. It's just the size of the prey, even though it's a perfect meal would, uh, you know, it would intimidate the crocodiles far too much, even though if the crocodiles realize that it would just, you know, there's nothing that the whales could do to stop them. They could literally just gobble it right mm-hmm. up. Yeah. I mean, they've never seen this creature before and it's huge. So they might just and be like, huge. give me the fuck away from that. Wasn't that's that totally. That's totally that's I'm that thing's food. Yeah, no, totally. I think they're probably terrified. Well, that's of pretty them. typical in nature. I mean, the, the bigger animals, most predators try and get away from them, no matter what it is, really. Isn't that like the rule of thumb? I mean, there's a lot to that. You know, lions will attack elephants, and obviously one of those is bigger than the other. But it's just a matter, you know, I think, like Patrick just said, it's a matter of it's so far into them, yeah. right? It's not just that it's too big. It, I, I bet you, and, you know, we're, I don't want to get into a long talk about evolution, but I bet you if you saw whales returning year after year into the river, one, five, 10, 50 years from now, one would get taken down by a croc, right? And it would just happen. It'd be an accident or maybe it gets stranded and die and the crocs would start feasting on it. Then all of a sudden whale would be on gotcha. the menu. Yeah. Like, crocs would start sure. figuring it out. Like, oh, this is, even though this thing's so big, it's, it's actually on the menu. But right now it's just like terrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> imagine if a baby bell cheese <laughs> were rolling down the freeway at you the, you know, the size the size of a house, like Patrick's analogy, you wouldn't be like, oh, yummy. You'd be like, fuck this. Like, this is my <laughs> kill, dude. What is this, an alien fucking going to consume me? <laughs> you know, God, you turn and hightail it. Yeah, and I think that's probably It's such a going. good analogy. <laughs> the thing about baby belt cheese is even just a normal-sized baby belt cheese, right? It, it, the, the, the wrapping is so appealing, right? That, that's, that's great. That sexy red rubber. Mm, yeah. You right. know, it's going to be fun to kind of dig your thumb in there and Ooh, pull yeah. it back and unveil this this perfect little log of cheese and I love cheese. It's my favorite food. <laughs> Yet baby bell cheese is a fucking cock tea. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's not a good cheese. It's really not a good cheese. It, it, it's, it's like dinner and a meal. It's like, it's, it's like a happy, me- a happy meal, right? Cause you're like, Oh, I'm getting a toy out of this. Cause I get to play with the wax and then you bite into the cheese and you're like, Oh, I'm so disappointed. Man. You're like, now it's my whole mouth feels like wax. It's, yeah. you might as well eat butter. It's like, it's closer to butter than it is. <laughs> you wanna, cheese. If you want a real <laughs> treat, gross. same aesthetic, same way to open it. Just get yourself a bottle of maker's mark gents. Never disappoints. Ooh, <laughs> love that. Yeah. Wax. That's a good, that's a good point you bring <laughs> up there, Peter. So a friend of mine, and I say friend very, very, very loosely. It's a <laughs> Talking about me again? Person that, that I know. Yeah, it must that, be. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. she recently posted um, on her Instagram that it was her hmm. birthday. And, okay. you know, hey, if you want to send me a, a, a birthday gift, here's my Amazon. No. Wow. On oh, Instagram. God. So I was like, this is, this is crazy. Like adults. Are. What, right, adult? right. Okay. So I click on it. One of it just reminded me that the wax. One of the things was a two hundred dollar wax kit, so you could seal letters with like a a stamp. She fucking a Thomas Jefferson, what's she doing? Well, yeah. who, what? That, that's, this whole thing is disconcerting, yeah. just entirely. It's got to be a joke, <laughs> satire. I, I, it's not. 
How self-entitled is this friend that she's sending out links to her Amazon birthday wish list? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have even seen it. It was just people, everyone who saw it was screenshotting it and, and talking shit. Oh, God. Yeah. Texting like, what the <laughs> fuck? Everything That's on there is like 200 Dude, bucks. send it my way. There's a whole what? subreddit for this type of shit. Let's out this bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that is wild uh, oh, Peter funny. Peter do you have your facts ready should we play yeah. the game the Forrest game? you weren't here Ooh, you, you weren't here for uh, the bonus episode last week uh, yeah Will actually proposed this game in the last show doc and it's real fun it's basically so okay. it's basically just um, fact or fiction where we have a collection. I, I select a collection of uh, random animal facts that may or may not be true. And then I, I okay. tell you guys what the fact or fiction is and you guess whether or not uh, it's fact or fiction. I went three no, no, and no, no, no. last You were two on and Monday? one, buddy boy. Very yeah. close to three and uh, okay. I just remember getting one right. So. Let's give it a whirl. It sounds right. fun. Yeah. Fact or fiction. Fact or fiction. <laughs> so... Our first one, don't snap at me, motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Our first one, because uh, Cat, or I mean, Pat is obsessed with cats. You and I both hate them. Cats only purr when they're pleased. Fiction. I'm going to go with fiction. Pat, you're wrong. Forrest, you are correct with fiction. <laughs> I know. I'm I, just I, I, Didn't we both say fiction? Yeah, so that, uh, Wait, but when else do they purr? Because I've never heard my cat purr when it, she's unhappy. It is. It is. Uh, they do, in fact, vocalize that way when they are happy, but they also purr when they're hungry, distressed, or when they're mending from an injury. So... Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I heard that. That's the one I knew. That was the only reason I, I stumbled on it, because I've seen cats purring while they're like cleaning sure. themselves cleaning a wound and i'm like this isn't a happy cat you know he's not he's not purring because of enjoyment he's purring because there's something else going on and i'm not a cat expert by any means but that was the only reason i picked fiction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this is interesting i just because i wanted to find out why they do it the purring is a self-soothing mechanism that uh actually releases endorphins mm -hmm. uh and thus removing stress hormones from the uh, lowering blood pressure and removing stress hormones. So it actually helps them physically heal faster by getting oh, rid wow. of the stress hormones that are keeping them from healing. So A really cool next time kind of you're hurt or sick, yeah, get just just drink booze, suck man. your own dick, orphans for dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A very kind of cool new age scientist went up on this thing once, and uh, that I was watching at this symposium, and he comp he compared purring to singing in the shower as a means to Ooh. feel like to feel good about yourself. He's like, yeah. And it was pretty cool the way I kind of remember the way he laid it out exactly, but he was talking about how, like when you sing in the shower, you get out of the shower, you're feeling good. You know, you've released some endorphins, you've self soothed, you think you sound good. <laughs> um, and he, he was comparing, uh, he was comparing purring to that. And I thought it was a really clever analogy. Sure. Uh, do you guys yeah. sing in the shower regularly? No. See, it's, I don't think Wait, I've so is that a real thing? Because I don't do it either. Is that just like a movie trope? Do people really do that? Probably do. Yeah, I feel like it's like, it's always like Macaulay Culkin's <laughs> dad in a movie. Is doing <laughs> yeah. But like, I've never sung in the shower because I'll just sing all day long. I don't need to go hide in the shower and mask the sound of my singing with the water. See, the difference there is, Patrick, you have a silky, smooth, scratchy, like true. deep voice. It's true. If you ever listen, I got kicked out of the choir at age 13. <laughs> true story. Not making that up. Legit got asked to leave the choir at age 13. I have a terrible oh, yeah. voice. It is. It's atrocious. I, I can tell just um, by your talking voice that you have. I mean, it would be ear splitting <laughs> to hear your singing voice. Uh, it's it's awful. It's got awful. Like, your <laughs> have you ever, uh, you, you know, when you listen to someone uh, singing with like headphones in and they're singing along and you kind of hear it. So you just hear their tone <laughs> yeah. deafness and their terrible yeah. delivery. My yeah, I once had a recording played back for me of me singing along with my pods in. <laughs> And was like, never again. I'll never <laughs> sing out loud ever again. It's so never ugly. again in my life. Yeah. Dude, no, I have a I funny just... story. Sixth grade, myself and my my best friend at the time, Andy Ballard, uh, who is a good singer, and I, I actually am a fairly decent singer. 
Uh, you are a we, good singer. I've we, heard you do. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about that. <laughs> but so, yeah, so we were in chorus um, and, and we just were, we were very poorly behaved. We were just, we were jerks and, <laughs> well, and yeah, we didn't still take are. our chorus. Yeah. So we were, we were bad and we would get in trouble a lot. And so uh, she decided to make, she couldn't, I guess she couldn't kick us out. I don't know if she talked to the principal, but all of a sudden there was now something called select chorus. <laughs> Literally, it got created like two months into the year. And it was a group of like the really good singers. It was her select chorus. And so the new thing was going to be that chorus only performed one song and then the select chorus did the rest of the show. And I swear to God, the select chorus was the entire chorus except me and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the thing. We do the first concert. We're in for the first song. And then literally she's like, now the select chorus will perform. There's a hundred kids on bleachers and, and two just the you. two of us just walk across <laughs> the stage and go and sit in the audience with our parents in the crowd. And then they perform uh, like 12 more songs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh That's my awesome. God. That's cruel and unusual punishment, mate. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, all right. What else you got, right. Peter? What else yeah. is fact or fiction? We're both one all right. for one. So, um, Pat, you, you answer first on this one, please. Fact or fiction, the fingerprints of a koala are so indistinguishable from humans that they've on occasion been confused at crime scenes. Fiction. That's a fact. I, I'm familiar with this one. Oh, I'm so sorry, producer. Forrest is correct again. That would make it two to zero, Forrest. Uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. Do you have another fact about this yeah, before I poke of holes course. in this? Okay, go um, ahead. Yeah, so koalas, obviously chimps uh, and gorillas also have fingerprints, but the remarkable thing about koala prints is that they evolved independently. So it, it's, it's not, you know, it's just a weird fucking... Okay. Unique happenstance thing. Convergent evolution is the term. Oh, go on, Forrest. I don't even want to hear the producer. It's going to be nonsense. No, I was just telling you when you were explaining it. It's called convergent evolution. It's like the reason two turtles on the opposite side of the planet look the same, both like turtles, is because they evolved convergently. Oh. They didn't split off, and uh, and you know they both they don't both come from a common ancestor like us and the great apes. They just evolved independently, mm -hmm. convergently. Their two habitats were perfect. So same thing with koalas' fingerprints, right? Like it's just, it's coincidence, but it's mm. convergent. They evolved these incredible patterns and fingerprints that are very much like human beings convergently with human beings, not here's, with a common ancestor. Here's why I said fiction. It was the bit about crime scenes, because that means either one of two things happened. <laughs> either one, someone got, you know, someone robbed a convenience store and the, the clerk got murdered. And then a bunch of koalas went in and raided it for the eucalyptus tea. <laughs> and they were like, man, there was, there was 10 people in here. And they're like, ah, nope check the tape. It was koalas. That's one. <laughs> I don't think that happened. Number two is that somebody got killed and they were like, God damn it. It was a koala that did it. And then later they were like, Oh no, it was her husband. There's no way that a koala no, fingerprint got confused in a crime 100 scene. hundred percent it has. Where was the crime scene in the no, zoo? I mean, maybe it, just think about it for a second. Maybe it was a newish detective. You know, they didn't give him that piece of the training. I'm looking at a picture of these fingerprints. <laughs> and I mean, you can see the difference. But if you were a, like if it was you or I, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Okay. Koalas have never been at a crime scene. Okay. Next. Okay. <laughs> a slug has four noses. No, 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 no. no. First. This always has to be you going first because he's an actual biologist. Oh, okay. <laughs> a slug has four noses. Mm -hmm. Uh, false. Ooh. Forrest, what do you say? It's oddly specific, and I don't know the answer, but I'm going to go false because I think you've just changed the number of notes. No, I am not that yeah. sly. Slugs indeed do have four noses, if you can believe that. Huh. They have a, set, a pair of noses that gather information about the inner in the environment that's located on the top of the head, and then underneath on the lower part of the head... They have uh, another pair that pick up chemical smells 
and are sensitive to touch. Oh, interesting. To find, I mean, they're so they're so ugly to begin with. Just give them ten noses. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so oddly specific. Know, well, Both of those last two were where I should just be like fact because there's you're not smart enough to make listen, these up. I, I, you know, I, I've prepared for this. <laughs> well, for a week these and a half. roving bands of koalas that are going around <laughs> killing people and robbing drugstores. You know, it's a big deal. It's not. Yeah. They're the hell's angels of koalas. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not so yeah. much about the the fact of the fiction. It's about the story and the uh, banter that evolves from these fact or fiction. Last one. This is uh, just to lock in your win for us because there's no way Pat can win. Uh, fact or fiction, bulls do in fact charge when they see the color red. Fact. Broologist. He's texting. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess. It's okay. I was texting. I'm going to go fiction. I, I don't think it's the color that has anything to do with it. It's how it's displayed. Forrest, you are correct. It is, in fact, a myth that they charge when they see the color red. The reality is, is that they charge at every single color, and it is the motion of the towel moving that causes yep. them to get aggravated, not the color. And they are also colorblind to red and green, so it wouldn't matter anyways. They've done, they've done studies with humans that show that the color red does uh, make you stay awake longer. I, I, I I'm love hungry. Reason. That's Have you ever right. seen that? Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I read this thing uh, not too long ago. Pay attention when you guys are watching TV tonight. Every food commercial, mm. think Arby's, Burger King, doesn't matter, will have red slates and red backgrounds. Um, and the reason being, they've shown that the color red actually increases appetite when you see it, you know, subconsciously. And so when they put that color with their garbage product, then it makes <laughs> you think that it's delicious because you get hungry when you see Ooh, it. Yeah, I mean, shit, you're right. Domino's, Pizza Hut, uh, McDonald's, yep. Carl's, Jr., everything has red in it. It's all you don't got see red. like a nice blue green because that nope. it doesn't even think, I don't even think of food. Um, nope. nope, it's all red. One more, one more bonus one. Uh, Pat can't answer because we talked oh, about it last week, but Forrest, fact or fiction, there was recently a party, a sex party that was busted by cops that would involve emus, wild boar with ball gags, and little people with a fountain of sperm that had 71 gallons of sperm. 41 gallons. 41 gallons Are of you sperm. Reading? Well, <laughs> based on the fact that you both know this, I'm going to go fact that this was definitely a real headline i don't know that i believe that it oh he nailed it, it. sounds like it a trick question you nailed it is that correct real headline yeah, exactly fake right news. <laughs> yeah that's pretty fun it's fake news yes. that came out yeah, that's yeah I, in, I initially fell for it and then it was it was debunked um i should have known when it when it was 41 <laughs> gallons of sperm because again sperm. it wasn't the number it was who right. measured it and why <laughs> and why yeah yeah. Why? yeah that's years of sperm collection that's not like you know years where... yeah yeah oh boy um that's funny. well last one and then i think we'll get to the battle royale gents i've got some i've got some oh, yeah go yeah, yeah, yeah go fun. but but if we got some more uh if we got some more more factor fiction or whatever i'm all for it no, let's get yeah, into it. Let's get into your story. More news. We're about 45 minutes. Let's try and get a get a little more content in for the Brisners. The Brosners? Okay. Well, um, I have this awesome researcher that works for me named Haley, and she sent me this thing that I took a little bit of a deep dive into. There's this area in Australia where wild dolphins have been fed by tourists for years, mm. right? And in exchange, the dolphins bring gifts. They bring a shell or a piece of stick out of the ocean or a bit of seaweed, and they do this exchange. Well, COVID hit, closed down this tourist attraction. Not to be, not that surprising, but the part that I loved about this is the dolphins started stockpiling gifts, just started bringing more and more Aww, gifts and dumping whoa. them on the beach, being like, hey, we're hungry. These, like, here's a poor gift. Poor guys. Can you feed Fuck, us? man. Now, uh, what kind we, of gifts were they bringing? Shells and. It's like shells, seaweed, uh, sticks, you know, kind of anything they could find in the ocean that was interesting. Um, but I just thought it was such an interesting account of, you know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions about marine mammal intelligence. They're definitely very intelligent. The the most widely accepted intelligence level of a dolphin is that it's on par with a pig. Mm -hmm. Right. They're like, that's a good way to look at dolphins. They're not like these sentient beings that are more intelligent than humans and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the, the most widely accepted thing is that dolphins are about as intelligent as a pig which is pretty intelligent. You know, pigs are known to have pretty good intelligent levels, intelligence levels. But um, I think what's 
just fascinating about this story is these dolphins have a learned behavior and they realize that there is a direct correlation between, you know, an action and a consequence. Mm. And they're like, if I do this thing, I'm going to get more. If I bring more gifts, I'll get more food, or at least I'll attempt that. And that's pretty cool. That shows a lot of not just like intelligence, but problem solving and understanding, you know, to bring more and more gifts and be like, maybe this will spark that food again. I I don't know. I thought it was really interesting. It is interesting. I mean, you know, my, my dog knows, like she thinks that she thinks that when we tug the rope, right, when you, you know, mm-hmm. got the rope with the handle on it, she thinks that when we play that game that it's for me, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I know that she, because she never brings uh, Christina the rope. She only brings me the rope. And she thinks it's like my thing that I like to do. And she'll just come and bring it like it's a little gift and just drop it in my lap and then just kind of stare, you know? It's just yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. And then you know what she gets? She gets to play. That's her treat. Yeah. There you so, go. you know, you see that same behavior. Uh, I love dogs. God damn it. My dog's at a, we took her to a little training thing. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a four week program where like they, they train like police, German shepherds and stuff like that. Um, and we were like, yeah, let's just like get her like next level training. So we drop her off Monday morning. We don't pick her up till Friday night. We're so sad, dude. This is week two. It's just, <laughs> oh, wow. She's still there. Brutal. Dude, but you get. So she's there all day long, like like she's, five, six hours? She's there and For sleeps there. Weeks. So we don't see oh, her again no until kidding. Friday. We pick oh, her up wow. on the, we have her for uh. the weekend, but this is week two. And it's just like, dude, coming down in the morning and thinking you're about to see the dog and then she's not there. I'm just that's like, brutal. it's, it's well, horrible. So I don't know why we're doing this. How empty does your house feel? Like that's, that's the thing, you know, I, I think, yeah. I don't think I ever talked about this on the podcast, but you guys know I lost my dog earlier this year. Yeah. Um, and we have a puppy now and he's wonderful, but... Um, uh, their dog of seven years we lost earlier this year very unexpectedly to cancer and it was devastating and the thing that i think you know the thing that i would like break down about emotionally not to get too sad but it's like you'd wake up in the morning expecting or come home expecting that you get this greeting and this excitement for seeing your dog and the the, the space just felt empty it was like a something was missing yeah totally yeah. dude totally mm-hmm. yeah it really does My- like it's just like a bummer. I'm like, we might as well just light this place on fire. We got, so we got my dog here. He's nine and a half. And he, when he walks around on wood floors, you hear this. It's a constant pitter patter. I mean, just constantly. So uh, I moved in recently, you know, with, with my girlfriend. And now that the dog is here, it's like whenever I take the dog, she's so used to that noise. She's like, it's so like weird in here without the dog constantly like making that Pitter patter noise all over the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, Pat, I do. I do have it's a question. Adorable. Has your because uh, you have a shepherd? They're they're notoriously very very smart animals, but sometimes hard to rein in. You've had you've had her there for two weeks now, or she'll be back. Uh, yeah, this is the second week, so we'll pick her up. Did you get her night. back for last weekend? And yeah. So did you notice a difference? Yeah. So what you do is you go in and you, you spend 90 minutes and they get you up to speed on everything they've been doing that week. Right. So week one is like general, like leash okay. training. Yeah. They have to train you right? too. Uh, isn't that right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they, in one week seamlessly taught her to heal. Wow. Yeah. So she literally just walks on our left. If we stop, she stops and sit down, sits down. It's, insane. it's amazing though. How much wow. they did. It's like a, a dream. Week. Like wow. she heals flawlessly. Open the door now. She she waits for permission to go out. I'm like, oh my, oh my god, god, that's amazing. Cool. It's fucking that's really crazy, cool. yeah. dude. That's yeah. good shit. So this so, week is this week is place. So after this, after when we pick her up tomorrow, she'll have her mat. And if we say go to your place, she'll go sit on the place. Oh god. So we're pretty stoked. It's like about magic. That. I should that's have done awesome. this. I would pay ten thousand yeah. dollars to have them train my nine year old dog to do this now. It's it's only uh, I would it's pay only that much four thousand train you. What are you talking about? I'm very you well know. trained. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um that'll be nice to have her back in the house, Patrick. It's it is yeah. a, it's a it's a big it's a big empty feeling when they're not there. So before we move on, I would like to bring back something that we did um a few times and then I think we got mm-hmm. sidetracked. Let's play bizarre animal of the week all right so let me let me lay this on you guys all right okay we've got this creature okay i'll even give you a little i'll just give you a little breadcrumb birdies i'll give you a little breadcrumb (laughs) yeah uh it's it's in india okay okay peter we're talking about an indian animal all right that narrows it down that narrows it down to me mate okay 
know, I know it's both of you, but I was just, you know, <laughs> come on. All right. So this creature has the nose of a mole okay. and the body similar to a blobfish with Ooh, legs. A spirit animal. Yep. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. sounds like someone just did a face swap between me and Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zing. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's continue. So just start uh, visualizing. Wait, start so, visualizing. so mm-hmm. nose yep. of a mole. Body of a, yeah, body of a blobfish. blobfish. Nose of a mole, body of a blobfish. Right. Okay. No neck, right? Hmm. Hmm. The color of this creature, purple. So very blobfish. Fishist. You know, blobfish. <laughs> so we've got a purple round creature, nose okay. of a mole, body of a blobfish with some legs. <laughs> no neck, purple skin. All right. I like Only it. Only now... You're thinking fish. I know you're both thinking. Well, you did say blob fish, fish, so it was in my mind. I I'm did, picturing but, sort yeah. of like a newt, like a salamander type animal. Mm, it's good thought. This is good thought process. <sighs> so to add to this bizarre creature, this animal only comes out of the ground for two weeks per year to slam. <laughs> Just comes out, mates, goes okay. back home. Okay. All right. So and it lives. It lives in the soil, like underground. Correct. Correct. Okay. Lives okay. underground. Okay. Um, in the you know in the topsoil layer, uh, and then once once a year for two weeks comes out, does its lays pipe, <laughs> goes back home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I don't know what kind of animal you're cre- you're picturing anymore, uh, oh. but in case it wasn't weird enough, the call of this animal sounds just like <laughs> like a chicken. It sounds like a chicken. It sounds like a chicken. Okay. Forrest, you may not okay. have a good singing voice, but you have a beautiful animal mating call voice. A good, a good yes. chicken voice? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else um, we got? Um, I've only got a little bit more before I'm going to give you each a stab at what kind of animal this is, and then I'll okay. explain it. Um, this animal with this weird molish nose uses the end of its nose, which is very pig-like, to slurp up ants and termites. Oh, I know what this is, but I don't remember what it's called. You do. Okay. Oh, now I'm going to look it up. I'm going to make it. I, all right. You, you want to take any stabs? I got one more little, little clue. Yeah, well, look, for give, you. give us the one more. Give us one more. Okay. When they are out of the ground, when this, this round blobfish purple <laughs> creature with the mole like nose that slurps it up, comes out of the ground for the two weeks a year and they're walking around going, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they do get into that, that hump city, get into their, their mating uh-huh. time. The male rides the female up through the dirt to the surface <laughs> where they will slam. And then she will lay up to 3,800 eggs. eggs. This is egg. this is See, really throwing you a curveball. You are not expecting the old egg. Well, I know what this is. It's no question. I've encountered one of these in the wild uh, on several occasions. This is clearly one of those anteaters that came from out of space. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. That's my guess. Um, I think it's going to be some sort of in, I think it's called the Indian purple oh, you, salamander. You, you, That's you think it is or you I you you're googling it, but uh, did you actually find it or did you well, just like, cause I do think it's interesting even Googling it. He, he's wrong. So he didn't, but he I think didn't he did it. Google it. He just isn't a good enough Googler <laughs> to get it with your description. <laughs> you're no, pretty I'm picturing close, a salamander. Yeah. You're Eggs, pretty right? close. It is an amphibian. It's the, um, the Indian purple frog, mm-hmm. also known as the donut frog. And we're going to post an image Absolutely. of it on our social media. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Do you guys want to pull this up? Will Will you're going to want to pull this up? I mean, talk about a bizarre. Oh my God. Indian. It's called the Indian, also called the Indian pig nose frog. I've Mm -hmm. never seen anything like this. This is very strange looking. This. Well, that's. That's officially the weirdest animal on the planet. You and I have a friend who <laughs> looks strikingly similar to this animal. I won't name names, but he, I don't even he know who you're talking about. Is. Oh my god! If you're listening to this, go to our uh, go to our yes. Instagram at the Wild Times Pod. Weird purple yep. frog. We will have a photo of this. This is this is truly, I think, one of the weirdest animals I've ever seen. I'm not just saying that to be entertaining. I love how <laughs> this is. Bonkers. I love how just. Look at the face, the, is the face though, but with the no neck on just the, the just it's just a blob of fat body with these. Little <laughs> Have you ever seen an animal with less no. neck? Like it's oh. it's all <laughs> it's like there's so little. Only neck. Big Ed from Ninety Day Fiance has less Definitely neck than not. that. 
a good so, one. The Indian purple frog, the donut frog, the pig nose frog, all the same creature. That is our bizarre animal. <laughs> Love it. it. It is good gross. One. That's a good um, one. Great, great fellas. By the way, I did have the Spirit Animals Blobfish merch will be out soon. That's ready to go and going to be up. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Mix. I like that. Can't wait to get that. I'm going to rock Me that too. a lot. I'm going to wear it every podcast. Well, I mean, you yeah. can't wear the Blobfish one because that's my Spirit Animal. What was your Spirit Animal again? A, like a bull? I don't care. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, all right, boys. Enough of that silliness. Sorry, no. It's time. The time that everyone's been waiting for all okay. week while Forrest was gallivanting around on a <laughs> Stuck boat. Stuck at sea. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Battle Royale. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like this one. Producer Will came up with it. It's a snake draft. Mm. Okay. We are going Peter, to create. You know Dude, you guys fuck it up it's just as much as old Retep does. <laughs> He has no clue how it What is this? Works. A fucking worm you draft? are, you're the commander of an army, but it's an army Ooh, like made up entirely okay. of insects. Wow. Ooh, which, that's a good one. Which three species would you pick, pick in your attempt to defeat the other two and take over? Oh, God. There's zero question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this. Okay. Uh, who wants to go first? All right. Well, like if you're that, that confident. No, you're really confident. Why don't you go first? Mike? Okay. Yeah, there you go. My pick. No, de no delay. These creatures are impossible to get rid of. They're invasive. I had an experience that almost broke up a long-term, years-long relationship I was in. And so these animals not only are violent and, and uh, aggressive and dangerous, they spread disease. They have the ability to ruin human relationships. My friends, <laughs> I will have my <laughs> infantrymen will be... The bed bugs. Millions of bed bugs. You will never get rid of them. They will be <laughs> everywhere and you will die. I I think that's a great pick. I I, I got bed bugs oh. in Mexico once and it, it it's one it's of the awful. worst. Like I'd rather break a leg same, than get bed same. bugs. Same. Hundred dude. Yeah. What it's so let, let me give bad. you a little story about bed bugs. So I told you it Look, when I was please. uh just after college, I was living with a girl. We got bed bugs, and they only go after one host in the bed. And they went after her and she would wake up every oh, single fucking morning with literally no joke, 30 to 50 welts all over her legs, her body everywhere. And so, you know, we tried, we had the exterminators, we, we like everything we could do. And then until finally, literally just basically threw everything out, entire wardrobes, mattress, fucking couch, all the furniture, everything. We just threw it all out. And fucking that was it. That was how we eventually and then had the exterminator came and left for three days. And ever since then, dude, like for us, 100 percent, I would take a broken leg over having bed bugs again. It, it, it ruins your life. They're, they're heinous, man. They're so that's, bad. It's crazy. That's, that's revolting that anyone yeah. is dating you. Um, what's, <laughs> for, for us, why don't you go next? What's your what's your first pick? OK, my first pick. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> my first pick is uh the dog just got a little excited <laughs> my first pick is the assassin bug Ooh. you guys ever heard of this no this but i like their name don't know it's like it was it. made for war yeah they're oh they are they are they're super gnarly um uh anyway so the assassin bug is a super cool bug i've, I've been into them since i was a mm -hmm. little kid and they have this straw like mouth and they use that to actually inject prey with a toxin that fully liquefies Jesus. their inside so they can then use that injector to suck all of its insides oh back my out. God. So they just they they literally shove acid into you, melt you from the inside, and then slurp it back out. So first guy on my <laughs> list is just a billion assassin bugs just coming that around is horrific. injecting you with melting that is horrific. acid. Does that bug have the power of the power of flight? Uh no, they're a, they're like a beetle. They just cruise around. Gotcha. I believe. I'm not yeah, no, they 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 cruise around. They don't fly. I'm gonna go. I have two picks. My first pick. So I recently did a documentary about Vlad the Impaler, right? Hmm. He was a right. Romanian emperor who fought against the Ottomans. And uh, Vlad had a really small army, right? But he had a brilliant tactic. He impaled men on wooden spears. That's been, right? What a great he created tactic. created an entire forest of men, 20,000 men on Jesus. spears. He didn't have the biggest army, 
but everyone has the most scared of them because fear is the ultimate force multiplier. <laughs> so I'm going to start out with the bot fly. Okay. Ugh. Forrest, you might yeah. know something about the bot fly. Yeah, just a uh, little bit. <laughs> so the bot fly actually on its, if you just look at it, it looks like a really cute, fuzzy little bumblebee. But what it does is it lands on human skin, skins, and then it lays eggs underneath the skin. Ooh. And it causes just horrific deform. What I mean, what does it do? Can it kill you? No, it lays its eggs under your yeah, skin. And right. Its larva hatches out. And the larva have these recurved barbs that go down into your skin so that if you try and pull, it just doesn't. Sorry. So imagine yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. barbs are like this. And if you try and pull, it just goes like that and mm. gets stuck. And uh, it makes this massive, and I know because I've had them, and they're fucking Jesus. disgusting. Um, it makes this massive, like, boil welt thing that's pulsating Ugh. with this rub living underneath Ew. your skin. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah. So m- my enemy's yeah. armies know that I have bot flies that are coming to get them. Uh, so they're just going to be scared. They're going to they're gonna avoid. They're going to avoid, avoid, Good. avoid. And then I'm going in a similar direction. I'm going to go with the mosquito. Mm. Have oh. fun with malaria. Oh, well, I mean, they're <laughs> they're bad. Well, all right. Wait. So, our, just to be clear here, our our insect armies are are fighting against human foe and not each other. I was planning on I sending my insect army to kill the two of you. Okay. Okay. Right. That's kind of okay. How great. I read. Great. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I think um, so since you didn't, I'll just avoid the nope. bed that your bed bugs live in. <laughs> <laughs> bed bugs don't just live yeah, in bed. Yeah, you have another pick, Patrick. Bed. So I went mosquito and bot fly. So oh, sorry, you did. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the mosquitoes. Who doesn't know how a snake draft awful. works now, bitch? Apparently, it's just me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my turn? Okay. Okay. Uh, I have one. No, it's Forrest's no, turn. No. Jesus no, Christ. No, you can call no, me no, Peter. Peter. All right. So my, my second pick is, um, you know, it's going to go along the lines of Patrick's in the sense of instilling terror but it is also, and I, I'm, we might digress to a story about this creature at some point. It's also just going to leave you as miserable as you can humanly be. It's the bullet ant. Ooh, now, for those that don't that know, hmm. yeah, it's a good one. The bullet ant gets its name because the bite of a bullet ant is said to be so painful that it ranks on whatever that weird pain meter that people like Coyote Peterson <laughs> use as worse than getting shot. Wow. Um, it is. Wow. It is supposed to be one of the most excruciating pains on earth. Jesus. Um, and so with my assassin bugs to melt you like acid mixed in with them are these crippling bullet ants. So the bullet ants rush in, you're brought to your knees in pain. In come the assassin bugs, just a little, tsk, and uh, you're, uh, you're melting. That's it. You're done so. Good pick. Good pick. I was going to take that one. What do you got? What do you got, Ratep? You're up for two more okay. picks. Two more picks. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so I get two more <laughs> picks. My, yep. I mean, I definitely, I really want to see you dead, Pat. Um, and I know. <laughs> a very good way, <laughs> you know, to accomplish this is, you know, I, I'll have the bed bugs. They'll be all over your entire house. Uh, anywhere you ever go for the rest of your life. Uh, all of these bed bugs will be following you, but I want to actually, I want you to die. Like I want you to be killed and I, and I don't want you living anymore. Sure. So what's the bug? Go ahead. So I will first be sending an army. He has no, no idea. I, I will no be idea. sending an <laughs> army no clue. of killer bees, uh, properly called Africanized yeah. honeybees, swarms and swarms of them to just, you know, buzz around you. Uh, while my, you know, my, my bees that I have that will be sh- singing show tunes buzzing around me, these Africanized honeybees will be killing you. And then if you're not dead yet, I will be sending in my army of just a common flea that are infected with plague. Every one of them is infected with the plague. <laughs> they will be <laughs> biting everything near Smart. around Pretty you. Pretty good one. And uh, I will destroy everything and take over the earth. Okay. Okay. Yours is definitely the most annoying army. Yeah. You, you've, you've got, got a, bed bugs, yeah. fleas, and bees. Like, that's just an, a very annoying army. But the bees army. can kill you, and really so can the pesky. fleas. Right. Sure, and, yeah. yeah, I mean, so in other words, if you shower and wear long You can't shower. The, these are infesting your life. They will be growing inside your body, okay. inside your house, okay. inside your pets, your animals, your babies, everything. For, for us, your life. what do you got? So right, far, so. you have a bullet ant. 
Yep. And what else? The assassin bug. Oh, the assassin bug. Yeah. And then my final one, very topical lately, uh, got to have an aerial assault. Yes, you, you do. picked, in my opinion, the two best, bees and mosquitoes, taken out, both awful. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go with a flock, will you? A, 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 a flight of murder hornets. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Murder you know, hornets. It's topical. Very topical. Top people are talking about it. It can kill you with a single sting. Doesn't typically, but it mm-hmm. can. Um, they're super aggressive, which is obviously significant. They come out from under the ground where they burrow, fly around, Ugh. zap you. You know, they are they're terrible. Just, they're just pretty much. They also off. Like, yeah, I, so. I do appreciate Forrest that all of your army they they have very dangerous sounding names. <laughs> yeah, they're they're yeah yeah the assassin bug, the bullet ant, the yeah. murder hornet. Like that is. That's a trio of badasses, if you've ever Absolutely. Heard. Yeah, that's a pretty scary <laughs> army. Now, yeah. my problem with your army, though, Forrest, is that only one of your bugs has the power of flight. I know. So it's going to be it's tough true. if if we're like, you know, if we're on a Navy ship just off the coast, how are you going to come get us? Uh, if gonna... you're literally standing in a puddle, I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah. So, please, so my please third continue. and final pick here to go along with my mosquitoes and my bot flies and my reign of terror okay. is the kissing bug. Have you heard of this? Sounds I very, bug very yeah. intimidating. It's a creepy, <laughs> it's a creepy looking bug that looks like a, like an ornate cockroach. It's like a mm-hmm. decorated cockroach. It's what are you, what are you looking at? Talk of, into the microphone. Stop turning your head. What would you say? How big is it? It's probably about the size of a thumb, like a small thumb. Uh, no, they're, they're, yeah, two inches maybe. They're pretty small. But here's why they're called the kissing bug. Uh, mostly, they're mostly found in Africa. Mm -hmm. They attack sleeping humans and they very, most often bite you on the face, but most often it's on the lip. And you you go to sleep, you think nothing bad's going to happen. You wake up and you've got a golf ball, literal golf ball sized welt growing out of your lip. Mm. And then it, and then it can kill you. It kills 12,000 people a year. Wow. In Africa, they died carry, from they the carry, kissing bug. Uh, what is it? Ch- 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 chaga, chaga, something like that. There's a weird disease. I, that's yeah, ch- sure. chungus. <laughs> but chungus. 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 That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Twelve thousand people a year, and if you Google it, uh, there's a picture of a, a a woman who got bit in the eyelid by a kissing Ooh. bug, and it is horrific. I mean, it. You do not want these guys coming after. Eh, that's fine. Uh, my army would win. Uh, Forrest, quick question. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, just dangerous, irritating flying insects. What have you, I okay. mean, it sounds like you've had encounters with either mosquitoes or bees that have really just sullied you on these motherfuckers. Have you? I have. And let's let, you know, I have. Um, it, you know, well, I'm not allergic to bees or anything. I mean, I grew up, you know, African uh, killer bees are just called bees. <laughs> from where I'm from. Sure. So, uh, sure. Yeah. So where I grew up, we had these super aggressive swarms of bees, and uh, a couple different times uh, we lost our dog. Oh to them. man! Um, so oh. yeah, yeah. Well, they were farm dogs. They weren't. They're like off the dogs my roster. About they're off my love. roster. I don't accept yeah. that. No, but they're gnarly. So we had a couple different times where it would just be this the swarm of bees would just go nuts, and you have like this pandemonium. Everybody's running around, shutting all the windows, shutting all the doors, shoving towels under the do- cracks of the doors so that the bees can't get in. And the bees are just in this like kind of frenzied swarming state. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess not a couple times. One time our dog got very sick, uh, one of our dogs. And then the second time it happened, it's kind of a weird story, but we lit a fire and we hadn't had a fire all year because it's Africa and it's pretty sure. hot. And we lit a fire in the chimney and turns out the bees had made a hive oh, in the chimney. God. So they freaked out from the smoke, filled oh, the house. God. We had to run out of the house. And, um, and then one of the dogs, uh, one of the dogs got stung, I don't know, hundred, 200 Ugh. times and, and died. I'm actually. sorry. I asked. Um, God damn it. No, but it's, it's interesting. They are gnarly. And that's how I always thought bees were until I moved to America, by the way, I thought bees were just super. <laughs> and then you're like Americans. Um, are you think and we have like some real bitch ass bees. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, as far as, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, experiences with mosquitoes, I mean, we've sure. all had them. It's just, they're, they're awful. terrible. Like they're just, Did super you, annoying. They, yeah, they're yeah, awful. The worst. I fucking hate um, them. Um, all right, guys. I mean, I think yeah. Let's well, hold, wrap on, hold, it on, up. hold on, hold on, hold on. So if you liked, if, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Gotta, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because you were about to move on. I no, know. no, I was, I was just, you know. I was gonna wrap <laughs> it up. 
All right. So if you like the Battle Royale, go on to iTunes, leave us a review. Let us know who won. Was it the producers, bot flies, mosquitoes, and kissing bugs? Which is, you know, it's it's a good, <laughs> yeah, it's a good squad. It's a good squad. Uh, was it was it the professor's irritating team of bed bugs, bees, and no, what was the third one? Fleas. Bed bugs, bees, plague and infected fleas. fleas. Be- I know everything, mate. Bed Keep bugs, shut. bees, and fleas. Or was it the badass squad of the broologist assassin bug, the bullet ant, and the murder hornet? You know that's the one you want to vote for. Go on to iTunes. Uh, leave us a five star review while you're there, please. That's all we ask in return. Tell us who won. Um, and if yeah. you're watching on YouTube, uh, give us a little thumbs up. Pop that a like is a comment. Tell mm, us who and, won. Uh, Forrest gives away prizes from his various sponsors. Real quick. So, and we pick based on the Don't comments. Don't forget to follow yeah. us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Wild Times Pod. Our channel on YouTube is at the Wild Times Podcast, or search us on Google. These This is posted with video, so you can see how ugly the producer is. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>